is an original effect by Warner Miller. It's called Any Diamond. And I will add a link in the description below to the ebook Deal, Mix, and Spell, in which you can find this effect. I will also add a link to his entire library of ebooks containing hundreds of mathematical card effects. Okay, so for this effect, you need the ace through king of diamonds. And it would be helpful to have two spectators, if possible. If not, uh, one's okay. They'll just have to keep track of two different cards. Okay, so have them mix the cards thoroughly. Now, first, we need a lucky card chosen. So you can have them reach in here and choose any card that they like. Maybe this one will set it aside for later. Okay, and then maybe have these mixed again. That would be fine. And then have one of them deal out the cards into three piles of four cards each. So three piles of four. Just like that. Now we'll assume spectator A is over here and B is over there. Okay, so have spectator A. Sorry, I'm dropping the cards everywhere. Have spectator A uh, pick up any one of the three piles and note the bottom card of that pile and that will be their special card. Now you as the performer won't see this card. It looks like it's the <laughs> looks like it's the 10 of diamonds. That is their special card to remember. Now they're free to set that on top of either one of the other two piles. So maybe they'll set it right there. And then you turn to spectator B and you say, okay, which of these two piles would you like to work with? And maybe they'll say this one here, the bigger one, which is fine. So what they need to do now is they need to note the identity of the bottom card of that packet, which is the seven of diamonds. And then they'll just set it on top of the remaining pile of four cards. Okay. Now from here, we're going to thoroughly mix the cards here and I'll show you how it's done. It's pretty thorough in its scrambling of these cards, as you'll see. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the down under shuffle in a way that most people have never seen it used before. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go down and then under and then down on the right, under, down on the left, under, down on the right. And we'll just continue that until we create two piles of six cards each. Okay. So just down, under, down, under, down. The last one goes on top, okay? So the last pile dealt, we'll set that on top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn to our lucky card here that was freely chosen at the beginning. Looks like it's the Queen of Diamonds. Now that Queen of Diamonds, believe it or not, is going to help us find Spectator A's card. Now, I don't know if you find that impossible to believe, but let's just see if the Queen of Diamonds can actually do that. So I'm going to spell out her name, Q-U-E-E-N, drop the rest on top, O-F, drop the rest on top, D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. Okay, was the Queen of Diamonds able to find Spectator A's card? Well, let's find out. Oh, I think it did, <laughs> if you recall. That was indeed Spectator A's card, the Ten of Diamonds. Now, the amazing thing is that Spectator A's random card is now going to find Spectator B's card. And I just need to remind you that all of these cards, this one here, along with the two Spectator chosen cards, they were random. These are random cards among the 13 diamonds. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and use the name of the Ten of Diamonds and see if we can find Spectator B's card. T-E-N, drop the rest on top, O-F, same thing there, and then D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. Okay, did we succeed? Did we find? Do you remember what it was? If you didn't, you'll be reminded right now. It was the Seven of Diamonds. Okay, wow. So just think about this, that these three random selections essentially finding each other, okay? So if you do exactly what I showed you here, this is truly self-working. There's no sleight of hand. There's no sneakiness here. The only thing I need to point out and, 
in terms of a small subtlety is the fact that, so let's kind of go back to the beginning just for a moment. So let's say we have a, a rant, this time we'll have it face up, this lucky card that's freely chosen. Now, when we deal out into three piles of four, let me just point out something here. So spectator A will go first, let's say, and then B. So let's say spectator A goes here. They want this little packet. You have them note the bottom one, okay? In fact, maybe I'll turn it face up so we can kind of keep track of it. So there it is. Now they're free to put it on either one, okay? So maybe they'll put it right there. Now spectator B is free to choose either one here and look at the bottom card. Now what happened in the performance was I had spectator B look at the bottom card here and that became their special card and then these go on top. Now because I did that, in the end, spectator A's card will be revealed first. That's the important thing. Whereas if spectator B chose to go with this pile and note this bottom card, which would then go on top, spectator B's card will be the first one revealed. Okay? So that's just something to be aware of. So whoever's card is fourth from the top, that will be the first one that will be revealed at the end. Now, if you forget that, it's not the end of the world because spectator B will see their card and go, man, how'd you find that? But it, it's kind of nice to find them in a predictable order that you're aware of, which is what we did in the performance. So whichever card, gets deposited on top in the end with this selection process, that is the one that will be revealed first. Okay, well, I've shown you um, all of the steps. This is self-working, and if you'd like to, take a look at Warner Miller's write-up, which will give you a written description of the steps. So I appreciate you watching, and I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.